High tech, low tech, or no tech. Through our hobbies and our passions, the geek comes out in us all. The world's a geek. I am a geek and I'm proud of it. Geeks. Geeks unite. So let's get those nerds! Nerds! No! Did you just call me a nerd? Not all geeks are nerds. Yeah. This is Geek Therapy Radio. What are we waiting for? <laughs> and now your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Welcome to Geek Therapy Radio. I am your mental curator as always, Johnny Hamburger, and I am stoked. I have said on shows before that sometimes I just get twitching in my britches because of the guests I have on this show, these awesome guests, and my awesome guest this week. Hey guys, it's Austin. Austin, how are you doing? <laughs> Great, man. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, I. you know what? It, in radio, I find myself kind of... Uh, impersonating people sometimes like i got to do parodies <laughs> for like other shows so i got to like act like politicians or different kind of ceos and stuff so i've been practicing my hey guys <laughs> that's awesome man it sounds good <laughs> yeah thank you very much um yeah so when uh whenever you retire for your channel i'll take over you, you just jump right in no yeah. one notice the difference exactly just give me your three million subs which congratulations by the way just the other day i oh, think you're you. at 2.9 yeah, we're, I think it, uh, oh man, I think we're almost at 3.2 million right now. Um, yeah, it's been great lately. Jiminy Christmas. And not to toot my own horn, but uh, I started my uh, YouTube channel for Geek Therapy Radio a little while ago, and I was hovering, it took me like, and you could probably add to this, um, add to the input here, uh, it took me like two years to get like 100 subs. And oh yeah. Th- and then, dude, and then like last week, I went up to 380, so that's like 280 or so, 200 subs in a week. So my focus is on that growth. Is there anything, there's a lot of people watching this, uh, they're, they're watching on YouTube, if they're listening on the radio too, they probably have YouTube channels. Is there any advice you can give to people that uh, are looking to build their channel beyond, um, well, I'll let you explain it. What, what advice would you have for up and coming YouTubers right now? You've got to have the patience and you've got to really enjoy it. Um, so it was, it was a similar story for me. It took a long time to get any kind of real traction. Like that first, you know, like thousand, like 500 subscribers, thousand subscribers, 10,000 subscribers, so much more difficult than your 3,154 versus 55th. Like it, it definitely sort of gets easier over time. But I think the, the important thing for me was it was something I enjoyed doing, even if no one was watching. Mm-hmm. And it was something that it's going to take a while and I just didn't care because it's like, oh, cool. This is fun. This is cool. Like, oh, I got like 10 subscribers today. Awesome. You know, like it was just something that I enjoyed doing even if it wasn't, you know, immediately going to a million subscribers day one. Right. And that, and that applies, I think, to people trying to do podcasts and even me doing a radio show. You know, this, this, this show is on in Houston, Houston, 6 million people. And and welcome to Texas, by the way, I saw you were, you were in Austin the other day. Um, But even in the city of six million, when they give you a show, like I was trying to be cautiously optimistic, I guess, like, oh, great, I get my show on a six million people, actual radio, and I could do podcasts and do, do, do. It still takes time. It still takes time to build that audience. But I'm I'm very happy that uh, over the past year and a half, it is growing and people are really are are digging the message um, that we should that we're all geeks about something and a lot of the time, it's just our geek thing, our hobbies, our passions, our interests that get us through the kind of monotony of life. Um, some people have a YouTube channel and they gravitate towards that and they put all their en- time and energy into that. And that can that's something that can help them deal with uh, the troubles of life. Uh, some people build cars, some people paint, all, do all sorts of things. Austin, back a few years ago, you... I don't know how many, uh, how big your channel was at the time, but you had a little mishap at your apartment, and the YouTube community really, <laughs> really gathered around you. Can you can you elaborate on that a little bit? Tell that story. Sure. So this was um, maybe four years or so ago at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just I was late at night, sort of working on a video, sleeping in, and I woke up and there was smoke outside my window. People were running around. And within like 30 minutes of me waking up, the whole apartment building I lived in was just completely burnt to the ground. Wow. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a, an experience, I guess. Um, but like you said, the YouTube community really rallied around. Um, they completely surprised me. I actually went to go and I stayed with my parents for like a week or so as I was trying to figure out like where I was going to move, what I was going to do. And they tracked down the address. They actually flew out um, from like L.A. and from like Toronto 
come surprise me with not only like a brand new computer, but just sort of the support of the whole community, everyone coming together and like, hey, you know, like keep making videos, kind of keep going. So that was one of those things that was huge and sort of really not only just sort of helped me get back on my feet, but also more importantly than that, it was so important to kind of have the community come together and sort of show that they supported me and mm-hmm. that, you know, we were all in it together and stuff. And I think that was something that was not only really helpful for me, but I feel like that was the beginning of a lot of the collaborations and a lot of the cool stuff that we all started doing together because we were like, oh, wait, you know, after this one big project, let's do more stuff. And obviously it wasn't to the same degree, but right. everyone started working together a lot more. Everyone started growing a lot more. It was sort of like the the thing that kind of touched off everything. Yeah, I mean, that's really a wonderful story. And I think my favorite part of that is that, um, you know, we're more, we're, we are more connected than ever in these modern times. Um, we're, we're more connected, but we're more isolated. Do you, you kind of see what I'm saying? Like we have, a, we have sure. a million friends online, but maybe not a whole lot of friends in real life. So, so the big takeaway from that story and your, your tale was that it, it gave us, it gave humanity hope, I think in that we, we seem to be increasingly connected, but, but increasingly kind of separated from each other. But when one of us is in trouble, we still jump to it. We still jump to it to helping each other out. And you had even, even just other YouTubers you had helping you out there. You had the backing of hundreds of thousands of people that were probably wanting to help out. And you had actual human beings literally driving across the country or wherever to get to you to help out. So it's basically these strangers in the dark corners of the internet, basically. It's the pixels came off the screen into real life to help help out. I'll just say it, a fellow geek. You're a geek like me, aren't you? Absolutely, absolutely. And geeks and geeks are sexy. That's what I'm saying. Geeks are sexy now. <laughs> it, it's not a derogatory thing anymore. Elon Musk is a geek. So yeah. And and a uh, uh, you know Tony Stark jumping out of the comics. He's a geek, but you know he's he's really cool. It's cool to be a geek now. Um, Especially if you're a billionaire geek. Oh yeah, you know that's that all. Helps. We should aspire. Did you see Elon Musk? He said he was he was going to try to help out the the kids in the cave, the Thailand soccer team. Did you did you hear anything about that? Yeah, yeah, I saw a lot about it. Yeah. It seemed cool, though. I don't think uh, it didn't come together in time, right? It didn't come together in time, and that's kind of my point. And I want your take on it. A lot of people kind of threw Elon Musk under the bus, you know, on social media and stuff, saying, "Oh, billionaire," uh, calling him a feckless billionaire. Billionaire, meaning all the money in the world couldn't save those kids. It, what wound up happening was the you know Thai officials and the Thai Navy SEALs wound up saving the kids, and I think that is unwarranted. I think that is really, really naive and stupid because Elon Musk was doing something, you know, and and from the get go he was saying, "I'm going to build a submarine and I'm going to." First of all, he did the R&D and he built a prototype in like 24 hours and then he got it across the world, which is nuts. And he said, I'm just bringing this stuff over here in case it's helpful. He didn't say I'm saving the day. It, it's just in case it's it's helpful. So what do you think about that, Austin? Do you think people are being kind of too harsh on him? You know, maybe trying to make him the evil billionaire capitalist. What do you think about that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think there's definitely I can see that it's not a purely selfless act, right? I mean, he was tweeting about it the whole time. Yeah. Everyone's like giving him all this good publicity. Like, I mean, it's not like he's just doing it for absolutely no gain at all. True. But also, I don't think it's like him sort of over here being an evil billionaire like, oh, excellent. The PR spin will this will make it totally useful. Like, I don't know. I kind of see both sides. I lean a little bit more toward it's not a big deal. Like, he was just trying to help out. And yeah. Yeah. You know, he was getting a little bit of a shout out and a little bit of publicity along the way. You know, whatever. I think lots of people we're doing that so i i don't know it, to me it doesn't really bother me that much just because it seems like if all he was about was just going for the pr spin there are easier ways of doing it than actually building a submarine and getting it shipped over that fast like mm-hmm. i don't know but elon musk is a he's an interesting guy very interesting to to say the least and that's right it, you know he, he definitely was getting a little bit of pr and in tesla you have a tesla don't you or no you got an audi rsc did you ever have a tesla no, no, I've done a lot of videos on Teslas, but never actually owned one. We're we're Audi brothers, by the way. I've got an S5. It's a 2010. Oh, nice. 2010. Nice. 4.2 4. V8. Oh, the V8? The what? Yeah. Yeah, the V8. The, V8, the 4.2, buddy. If you're ever in Houston, I mean, it's your RS3 is probably quicker. And, uh, <laughs> you know, now that I say this, it sounds kind of dumb for me to offer you to drive my S5 because you just recently got out of an R8, you know, doing some tests on it. How did that go, by the way? 
Oh, it was great. So that was actually why I was in Austin a few weeks ago. Um, I went out with Audi uh, and basically they uh, let me do the full circuit of the Americas uh, track day. So they actually offer this as something that uh, even if you're not a, an owner of Audis, you can go and pay. There's different uh, like classes based on like whether you want to do it for like a half day, if you want to do the full track and everything. But it's not like crazy expensive. And what you can do is you can actually get seat time in a variety of their high performance vehicles, including the R8 on the full F1 circuit of the Americas track. Awesome. And uh, I got to say, it's 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 an experience to like be in this V10 powered supercar. You come around that last corner, you look, you see all the grandstands, which of course are totally empty. But you just come around that, you see the start finish line, you're like, wow, I feel like a race car driver right now. It's so cool. Before we get out of this segment, Austin, can you stick around for one more segment? One more segment. Absolutely. Cool. How? What? What's the fastest you got to? Because Indy courses tend to be a little faster, aren't they? So how fast did you get up to in that R8 V10 plus? In the R8 V10 Plus, I was able to hit 145 on the back street. That's, you know what? You see, the crazy thing is, you you probably hit 145 in no time. Like my first yeah. <laughs> my first car went from zero to six. It was a Volkswagen Bug, a '74 Beetle, zero to six. Oh, nice. Yeah, dude, I've had two. I want another Beetle. I I, I like cars. I, I get the feeling that you like cars too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah car geeks like car geeks um so my 74 beetle did zero to 60 in a weekend and you probably <laughs> and you probably did zero you did probably did zero to 45 zero to 145 in probably less than 30 seconds i'm guessing so the crazy thing is oh it was i think it was yeah like 20 seconds on the straight Jeez. um the crazy thing is is that um they actually you can't do the full length of it because uh there's uh instructors on track so you have to break after them mm -hmm. so uh i did one lap where they actually were like kind of everyone went away and you know all the all the safety people were like oh, okay cool and like they disappeared and uh with the instructor driving we did 162 on that back street Jeez. so you can yeah, there's so <laughs> much speed in that car and you're going like 160 miles an hour full right on the brakes you're like 160 down to like 40 in like three seconds it's crazy so it, it melted your face a little bit Oh, it was great. It was totally awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, Austin, stick around for a second. We're going to get into the next segment here. Listeners, if you're listening to the podcast, this is going to be pretty instant. If you're listening to the broadcast here on KPRC 950, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Got to pay some bills around here, but we'll see you in just one moment. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. Austin Evans is still my guest. Uh, YouTube channel just broke. Uh, well, he's, he's sitting at about 3.2 million. I almost said billion. That'd be pretty. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I'd be a few years away from that. <laughs> yeah. If it it took two years to go from zero to 100 subscriptions, how long <laughs> is it going to take to a billion? Anyways, that's actually kind of what I wanted to touch on here, Austin. What do you? I has it become more difficult for people to build a YouTube channel after the whole we don't have to get into specifics of it after the whole Logan Paul incident and adpocalypse and everything what has been your experience as as a YouTuber who's kind of weathered it all what's it like to have a channel right now is it easier or harder or what's what's going on yeah that's a hard question I think it's different for everyone I think personally for myself I haven't really seen a lot of negative impact um, tech content is usually pretty safe, so yeah. it's not super controversial. It's not like you know vlogging or any of the kind of the 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 more sensational stuff out there. So um, it's actually been pretty straightforward for me. Uh, I haven't had a lot of issues or anything. Um, I think there's definitely some people who aren't super happy with a lot of YouTubers. And I think they put a lot of YouTubers in like one giant bucket of like, oh, they're just a bunch of attention seeking people and this and that. But uh, I don't know. I think as far as starting your own channel today, I think now is as good a time as any. I mean, I definitely had the advantage of starting early where there was far fewer like sort of people competing and there was much easier to sort of get some eyeballs. But at, at the same time, there were a lot fewer people watching YouTube. No one really had anything figured out. So that was something that the first three, four, maybe even five years of me doing it was just kind of understanding the platform, making hundreds and hundreds of videos to just try to get like, hey, what do people want to watch? Whereas today, right. the playbook's already been written. It's not that difficult to understand and at least get started. Obviously, it is very difficult to get an audience, but yeah. I feel like a lot of the stuff that I spent my early days on has already been figured out and you can sort of hit the ground running. So I honestly think that there's lots of people who are starting today who a year, two, three years from now are going to be just as big as the Logan Pauls of the world. Yeah, and I think I think back to what you said earlier, 
the key to build a YouTube channel and, and listeners, this is this is for anything, building any sort of presence, even if you have a small business, is first you gotta do it because you you love it. You have to get some sort of enjoyment out of it. And one one thing I tell people because I uh, play guitar and I used to teach a little bit, I said the first things first is you have to want to do it. You have to love playing guitar because practicing is going to be so much easier. Actually doing it's going to be so much easier if you have like the drive and the love in your heart to do it. So if you're building a YouTube channel, first have the drive to do it. Two, always be working on improving it. That's something I'm doing here with the radio show every week. How can I make it better? And I think as as long as, and keep making videos, keep making content, keep making podcasts, keep putting stuff out there. So if you have those th- three things lined up, uh, the passion, the drive, um, oh, what did I say? Putting out the content and did I say three things or two things? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm brain farting. <laughs> just, just have the drive and passion. It makes things way easier to do anything in life when you actually love to do it. Austin, I want to talk about a, a couple, couple things here, a couple tech things here and maybe, maybe a couple car things. You do these videos where you say how to how to waste you know or how to how to waste how to spend like four how to waste yeah how to waste like four hundred thirteen dollars and twenty seven cents on Amazon. What <laughs> is your favorite and what is your least favorite thing ever from all those videos uh, put oh, together? Oh man. Uh, so the way that that series works is that uh, my main camera guy Ken, he's the one who picks all the items. So when I start that video, I have no idea what's coming. Every once in a while, I like I walk around the corner, and I see him like hiding a box, and I like, get a glimpse. But like I do my best to avoid knowing anything about it, which makes it fun because sometimes he gets some really crazy stuff. Um, I remember some memorable stuff. Uh, it wasn't even like it didn't seem that crazy when you first looked at it. But there's this thing called the Robo Raptor. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like a, oh man, I think it was like $60 or something, but it's this sort of remote control little dinosaur toy. And at first I was looking at it like, oh, this is dumb. You waste your money, you know, doing the video. Um, but then I didn't realize it was motion sensing. So I like, got like right up in its face and I was like poking it, trying to get it to work. And like, it like screamed at me and like, like went at me. And like, <laughs> that was the most scared I've been on camera. I just totally was not expecting some stupid toy to like actually come after me. Yeah. So that was definitely one of those moments. Uh, at one point we had a, like an $80 ball bearing that was like 25 pounds. That's my favorite just, thing real quick. I love that thing. Go on. <laughs> it, was, it looked like a cannonball or something. Yeah. Like I pull out, it's like a, it's all oiled up. So like I pull it out of this box. It's like dripping with like oil. I'm like, what is this weird smell? There's been some weird stuff, but there's also been some good things. But I feel like it's always easier to remember the the crazy stuff. Where I'm just like, are you serious? Is this really what we're doing a video on right now? Yeah. It's, I like that ball. That was my favorite thing. I like, I don't know something about the smooth like roundness of the ball bearing. It's like that. That's not a stupid buy. That's something cool. So ridiculous. So it's so weird. So next question, and we'll wrap it up here because I know you, your time is your time is precious. Um, <laughs> what is what are what's your two dream cars? Old car and new car. Oh man, old car is definitely uh, actually a Volkswagen Karmagia. Yes. Um, Holy crap! Yeah. Are you my brother? Yeah. My goodness. My uh, my aunt had one when I was growing up, and oh, was, man, I I wanted that thing so bad. Uh, it was like a black one, like four speed, yeah. dude. It was so cool. Nice. I remember my dad drove me around when I was like four or five, and I'm like, yep, I just want one of these in my life. Convertible? Uh, uh no, it was a coupe. It was the, a coupe. The coupe looks better. I dude, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was one of those cars where I just it was so cool, and yeah, as like a six year old, I'm like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh gosh, Carmen Gia. <laughs> I'm gonna put a picture up on the yeah. for the YouTube video people watching on YouTube. I'm put a picture of the Carmagia. It is it's spectacular. it's a unique looking car. Yeah, like it's I don't think there's anything else like I can't just say like oh it looks like this or that. Like it's a very unique, different looking car, which I feel like timeless. most people probably never even heard of. Yeah, absolutely timeless. Uh, as far as a new car, oh, that's tough, man. I mean, I feel like oh, that R8 was pretty nice. Uh, yeah, that's my dream <laughs> car. R8. Just gonna throw that one out there. Yeah, it's it was interesting driving it because. Um, especially driving it on the track, it didn't feel that scary. I feel like you hear a lot of people who drive like these exotic cars and they're always talking about like, oh, I'm going to kill myself in it. It's so scary. It's so fast. Right. But driving that R8, I mean, it was pretty much immediately like, you know, five minutes of doing a couple laps and I felt totally comfortable, you know, doing crazy speeds and throwing it through corners and trusting the brakes. Like it felt like just a big fast Audi, not some yeah. crazy Lamborghini with it wants to like spin out every five seconds. It was really sort of it, it made me feel confident. It made me feel like a good driver. And I think that's always a good sign in a car. Absolutely. Austin, on the way out here, what what advice would you have? Everyone has their geek thing. What advice would you have 
for for us fellow geeks, and, re- and remember, we're all geeks about something. All of us are geeks. Uh, when times get tough, like after your your apartment fire, what what advice would you have for people to kind of help them get through? Oh wow, I think it's important to not give up on things you're passionate about. Yes, I think that's something that's been something that I've tried to to live by, you know, for as long as I can remember. I think there's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be issues in your life. But I think a lot of what makes you the person you are is how you're able to handle those, right? Like, I mean, when the good times are good, of course it's easy, you know, like you're having fun, everything's great. But I mean, everyone hits bad points in their life. Everyone hits sort of tough times. And I think that that's sort of the moment where you can really sort of realize, hey, look, you know, this is something I'm really passionate about. I want to keep doing it or, you know, whatever the case is. But I think that those are the times where things really sort of shine through and you can really kind of understand like, oh, you know what, this really is something that's, you know, I'm passionate about. This is really something worth sacrificing for. This is really something that I want to do versus, oh, this is just something I tried that didn't work out. Like I feel like those times where things are tough, that's where you really kind of understand whether whatever it is that you're pursuing is going to be worth it or not. Man. I couldn't have put it better myself. Austin, thank you so much for being on Geek Therapy Radio this week. Thank you for having me.